Okay, hello, um, welcome to episode four of Game Buffs. Um, I'm Dean Bowman, and uh, the other buff gamer over there is. Oh yeah, I'm um, I'm James Hamblin. Sorry, I was just doing some some arm curls. Okay, no, fair enough. You won't you won't mind in a minute if I start doing some push-ups or something like that as well. Yeah, that's that's, that's fine. Yeah, the, the more the merrier. Yeah, uh, but, but you know, just try and keep your your mouth close to the microphone. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. you've got to, we've got to maintain this buffness. At, yeah, um, at all twenty four seven. So um, yeah, I'm just constantly yeah. constantly exercising since we started yeah. since we started this series of podcasts. We're going to be doing some mental exercises uh, this episode though, okay. because um, we've been playing a very smart game, haven't we? Um, yes, we've been playing a game called the Beginner's Guide. Um, so let's kind of i'll just try and summarize this game okay um, good luck it might might be worth pointing out that like with every episode of game buffs we we will kind of like dive in in detail therefore there may be spoilers ahead um so if you are keen to to play the beginner's guide without having it spoiled um maybe maybe go and play that before you listen to this it's not it's not long it's not long it's uh, about it's 90 minutes long or yeah. thereabouts um and it's uh i think you mentioned earlier that um it's <laughs> it's kind of like the sh- it's got the most stuff to think about within such a short amount of time <laughs> that you've you've come across <laughs> yeah it's um, um it's it's very upfront about the fact that it's only about 90 minutes long and it's about the only thing it's upfront or clear about i think probably uh, so yeah. Okay, so the Beginner's Guide is a game by uh, Davy Reardon, um, who um, who wrote the Stanley Parable, didn't he? With yeah. um, with William Poo, um, and um, so this is a new game by him, and it's kind of ninety minutes long. Um, it's narrated by Reardon himself, um, so he he talks to you through the course of the game, um, and the. Cas- the conceit of the game is kind of he is presenting to you a series of games by um, a reclusive designer that's a friend of his called Coda. Um, and as you play through these very short games that Coda has supposedly made, um, Reedon begins to offer his interpretations of them um, and by extension his understanding of Coda himself. Um so uh yeah and and as the as the game progresses the relationship between Reedon and Coda becomes murkier and and Reedon, Reedon becomes more and more unstable himself it's kind of like a kind of a, an un, video game equivalent of an unreliable narrator in some respects from uh taking a kind of concept from fiction um and and you know that gives you a a kind of rough idea of of what the game is conceptually but within that it pretty much throws every kind of idea it can at you and uh thinks deeply about a lot of issues that relate to video games and creative works and the artistic process um so yeah where do we where do we start um i think possibly uh with uh, the f- well no, i was going to say the fact but i don't think there are particularly many facts that you can cling on to um when you're you're playing this um i think um possibly uh i would like to ask the question whether um this is actually um an interest well not necessarily an interesting whether this is um a a beneficial experience um for the player and for um the creator or just one or just the other here um did you feel this was uh you were in on basically an interactive davy reardon therapy session um or did you feel that he actually had interesting things to say about anything at all really yeah because i mean you could feel quite voyeuristic about it and be like oh i'm just kind of um witnessing this guy speak very kind of like 
because it's, it's very kind of confessional the tone of it yeah. especially towards the end when he starts talking about his kind of social anxieties and they come to the fore um and it's clear that the kind of social anxieties that coda is supposed to have um are actually manifest much more in reading himself so it becomes a, a, a lot clearer that this is kind of autobiographical and following the success of the stanley parable i believe he did have a bit of a a breakdown and and stepped away from the limelight and hasn't been able to deal with success that well so there's definitely a lot of reading himself in the game but um yeah and also like i guess what it boils down to is how you see that connection between between coda and reading because it's really not clear whether i mean coda is obviously made up um well i imagine he is anyway um <laughs> i don't know but... there's, there's a lot of debate but well there has been some in if you you don't have to look that far on the good old internet to find um people debating wh- whether coda is real or not and um... there's a conspiracy theory saying coda <laughs> yeah. is real and is living on the moon with elvis yeah kind of thing yeah yeah and um uh, and that um if he is real whether read and has misappropriated his um intellectual property and therefore whether people you know on steam should be entitled to refunds Whoa. and things like well that. so <laughs> if it, you don't have to dive that far in to start finding um people talking in those kind of terms not well read and has certainly uh, misappropriated his intellectual property and that's one of the <laughs> themes that the the game kind of touches upon but since since coda doesn't seem to actually exist i don't think it's, no i don't think i don't, uh, I don't think i don't think it's it no. can be considered no. um i think you know, a I think, prosecutable <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think that um uh one of the things that um i i half expect after i'd finished the game i had or games it's kind of a compendium really of, of yeah. kind of unfinished kind of prototypes almost or possibly even kind of finish that's another debate as well about whether these are actually yeah, finished games yeah. or whether these are half formed ideas or things that's like that. That's another interesting thing isn't it? Yeah. This is almost like a compilation of short stories yeah. uh, which and you don't really get at all in video games. I think I think it's almost um uh the kind of um uh, a kind of compilation of uh, you know kind of it, it did like I say it did feel to me um, at times a bit like a like i said an interactive therapy session where mm. he's presenting thoughts and raising questions and then not not answering them but i think that um after finishing the game i half ex- i was half surprised at the start you know these days with films quite often where they say um based on a true story or you know taken from true events or something yeah. like that and in actual fact that depending on the story and depending on the film how much of the the truth is actually there um it, it, you know varies to a, a a great degree and i one of the things that i was thinking about at the end was how much of this is kind of based on true events and then he's kind of you know it, it extrapolated out of that you know by by kind of um thinking about it the the points that he thinks are interesting about his own situation and then has kind of presented them in a kind of semi-fictional way um to try and um possibly you know uh, kind of therapeutically for himself but also to you know trying to um uh, explain to to his audience or you know the game's audience um some of the uh the issues with um uh with game development i think especially kind of mm. not necessarily solo game development but small you know kind of team indie if you want to call it yeah, that kind of you... game development where basically it's i mean we with a huge team i i guess you know unless you're somebody like i don't know like kojima or somebody like that uh, your personality in in large games often gets lost in the kind of vastness of the greater project whereas in a small team or if it's just you it's I, and i think we saw a lot of that last year it's you're putting quite often uh, and, so, and it's it's becoming you know increasingly deliberate um developers are putting more of themselves into their projects to tell stories yeah and um i think this is interesting because it's kind of uh you kind of obviously you know he's 
he's spoken to the to the fact that you know he has had you know issues and, and things like that but how much of this is kind of real not real but how much of this is is kind of um you know uh taken from true events and how much of it is yeah, actually true you, events that, you know themselves you can't really know for certain i guess and i think that's one of the points of the game is mm. that it, it seems to kind of um debunk the notion of auteur theory in a lot of ways because mm. even even though he's clearly put a lot of himself in the game the the entire uh, reason uh reading is is doing these interpretations of, of coder's works is he's trying to um reconstruct coda as an author um of those works like he talks about like looking for his calling card and his his clearly uh interpreting these works as um you know a a body of work belonging to an author with um specific kind of thematic preoccupations and he reads a lot into them he's constantly interpreting um and um you know understanding the the games as an expression of of their author um yeah and i i think at the end by the end of this game that kind of process has been revealed to be kind of eminently flawed um especially as um uh, basically at the at the end of the game everything kind of like starts falling apart a little bit and his relationship with coda kind of falls apart um he he starts to try and show coda's work to other people in order to as an attempt to try and kind of uh, get some positive feedback for him because he thinks this will help but it doesn't and Coda disappears and just sends him one last email which has his final game in it which is called The Tower and it's incredibly dark um, and uh, it's almost impossible to proceed in the game without hacking it which um, Reardon has to do to progress and um, at a certain point in that game you start to just go into these areas that just have messages directed specifically to reading which talk about i think one of the quotes is um uh, would would it um why why don't you let the games just be as they are so he says if there's an answer a meaning would that make you happier um so it's like almost denying the fact that there then there needs to be an interpretation of the game and and whether whether that you know whether that that should be seen as a reflection of the author or not um which is all really really fascinating um and very meta um obviously yeah i mean um i think um it it's when you when you finish the game it's looking back on it it's a struggle to um kind of pass out um all the things it, into individual points that he's he seems to be trying to to make um part of that is because there's there seems to be quite a lot of stuff and you have to try and work through in your own head what you think is important and what you think isn't so so important and also because you don't know whether um you know uh Reden is um you know playing himself here totally or whether he's kind of playing a version of himself you don't know who coder is um uh, i think i ended up assuming that they were both aspects of reading's yeah, own yeah. psyche and yeah. maybe because they're both kind of like hung kind of hung up in in different ways or rather they're kind of like they're both kind of suffer from the same kind of social anxiety but both deal with it in different ways coda deals with it by becoming reclusive and just kind of like absorbing himself in creative projects which he doesn't release um whereas um uh, Reedon tries to find external validation um e- even if it means kind of taking coda's work and passing it off as his own which he kind of even admits to doing at the end it's like i'm putting this out there and i'm putting my name on it to try and introduce coders work to the world almost has a kind of an apology to him um which yeah i think seems horribly counterproductive I, I think there's a strong case for um uh thinking that uh, coda is part of um reading either the if you want the creative part um 
and uh that reading in this in the game reading in the game is the part of reading that um is uh, looking it, it enjoys public attention yeah um, well, it's, it's uh, the critical part maybe yeah like the... yeah the the part i i think i think i kind of concluded he was the part that um uh kind of was after not after but the the part that that enjoyed public attention because a lot of the things that a lot of the points that he raises are things that i think um either kind of the kind of game uh, commentators or the gaming public um uh they're the kind of questions that that they would raise or they're the kind of questions that he think uh, this is getting confusing now that read and thinks are important to them if you saw what i mean mm. um and um i'm not i'm not sure whether kind of coda is meant to be a pre stanley parable a stanley parable um reading and reading in the game is mm-hmm. is meant to be post stanley parable reading or whether it's just a, a kind of composite of who he he you know kind of now is there's two of the um the the big themes in the in the game are um uh, there's this uh, there's a talk of this creative machine um mm. uh, that actually uh, kind of uh, appears in the in the game later on and um that is uh, it is is alluded to well is shown as being coda basically um yeah and... coda feels his uh his creativity is dried up and yeah. he sees it literally as a, as a machine that stopped working which yeah. you find in the game and and um uh the other kind of major theme is um uh is the kind of uh, uh, appreciation if you want of games by other people and mm. uh, whether it's reading or whether it's you know kind of the, the the public or the press um and uh whether games not change but whether <clears throat> whether they need to be appreciated and if so is it important how they're appreciated mm. um cuz i think one one thing that this game does is it's got quite a scathing critique of games journalism in some respects because it, it's almost about the limits of interpretation i at the end like it, it kind of denies the fact that there can be or should be a kind of solid interpretation of of, of the game um and it, it kind of casts reading as a a kind of um <sighs> So someone who try you know tries to validate himself by you know feeling like he has introduced coder's work to the world when really you know his his lacking creativity himself so so it almost mm. kind of presents journalists as this kind of uh a talentless people who kind of like sponge off <laughs> creative people's work <laughs> and try and find validation that way um which is kind of interesting obviously obviously that kind of ironically renders everything that we're saying here completely (laughs) irrelevant because the whole point of this game is interpretation is doomed to failure and journalists are hacks so um (laughs) yeah with that kind of caveat in mind um take this with a pinch of salt i guess (laughs) um i think i think that um obviously that kind of it's very clear from the game that coder is meant to be portrayed as um the kind of the positive um uh kind of party here um albeit one who's kind of um sliding into to um uh, reclusion um and that um it's it's interesting that um as he slides further away from people uh, reardon is gaining in his desire for public attention not like you say not necessarily for for his own works but for coder's works in the in the story of the the game um and it's um uh it seems that's i think quite a lot of the 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 kind of you know one of the the driving um ideas behind this being two parts of reardon's actual personality whether they're present at the same time or whether they're past and, and present um but the kind of um the competing things inside him that as um uh if you take it that um coder is the the kind of the 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 internal satisfaction that that starts to dry up 
um, or Coda starts to become more distant and further away as Reardon's desire for public adulation grows and it's kind of one taking over the the other but yeah. at, at the same time he's kind of I, I think possibly he's he's kind of saying that as that happened if if he just becomes obsessed with the um the, the you know the public and the, and the critics that the creativity goes away then because he's not doing it for the for the right reasons he's um you know he's doing it for for a, for those ends rather than for any kind of creative purpose Mm. It's every, every time you uh, <laughs> you say Reardon, I keep thinking of the snooker player Ray Reardon. Um, yeah, oh, Ray is it Reardon. what? I Reardon. Think it's, Reardon. I think it's Reardon. I'm, yeah. My pronunciation is <laughs> Reardon. Davy Reardon. It's okay. It's like <laughs> a bizarre image in my head now. Of a, of a snooker player. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I know. I think that that's an interesting interpretation of. Um, of those two characters being kind of two aspects of his personality that kind of you know are on a seesaw from one another really as one gets kind of and well as one increases the other retracts yeah i think um, i think that that's how it well I, I have no idea if that's right but that that's how it um seemed to me and there seems to be um there's you get to the end of the game and there's a distinct feeling of uh, from uh <laughs> reading um uh there's a distinct very distinct feeling of regret at the end of the game mm. um and um uh, as well there's uh, once the game finishes there is then an epilogue and then after the epilogue um there are very very short kind of closing credits and there is a track that plays over the closing credits which is called turn back as well mm. which seems um to kind of suggest that he would quite like to uh, to to kind of go back and possibly have uh, and i think as well just the the title of the game as well the beginner's guide i think maybe this is like i said a kind of therapy session for him but it's mm. also a kind of uh, possibly this is what i've learnt up till this point yeah. and i just want it's one that we've been caught up in as well yeah. which makes it really awkward to play in some respects yeah yeah um but yeah the kind of he'd quite like to to go back with the knowledge he has now and um not necessarily do things may, maybe different well yeah i think maybe do some things you know differently and and uh, you know kind of approach things differently but it's um like you were saying about the the critics and the and the um the, the kind of the public as well there's a very um the, there's a well there's lots in the game but one of the things that's very prevalent in the game is um uh dialogue um and um uh how d and just on on uh, kind of in different aspects of it you know dialogue between the creator and the player dialogue within games in terms of kind of dialogue trees and things like that um uh, quite a few of the games have dialogue trees that give you options but in actual fact don't give you options at all um and um uh i think there's a there's a um uh, there's a a point that you get to where there's um uh, the implication is kind of uh i'm trying to have a conversation with you here but it's impossible basically um for various reasons um but that is then into <laughs> that is then interwoven into uh, other things as well about himself possibly speaking to himself uh, you know previous you know from from the past and um you know giving himself advice about things like this as well that you know ha trying to have a dialogue with um with the audience is a very difficult thing um and um yeah it's it, it's it, it seems to be possibly not just a list of his regrets but a kind of uh he's made this game <laughs> there's another ongoing theme in the game about um uh reflecting on things once they're they're complete um or whether you've even completed them or when you're you're kind of done with them and i think possibly the whole game is a kind of you know reflective piece on um you know where he's come so far and you know the the things that were were good and possibly how they've they've you know 
soured in some ways as well it's interesting that you should note that he he almost wishes that he could go back and kind of do things differently because that's exactly what you could do in stanley parable yeah. in stanley parable you you took a route through these forking paths yeah that w- were the game and then uh, you got to some kind of an ending and then you started again at your desk and you got to try again whereas in this game it it's much more linear it just ends and also in the stanley parable that game was an exploration of like the limits of player freedom within a mm. game really like how much you could deviate off the the critical path as laid down by the game's designer in the form of a, a narrator um and, and you could kind of willfully um defy the narrator and and kind of like beat your own path in that game to a certain extent although he'd always kind of punish you for it or kind of anticipate what you were doing whereas in this game you literally often can't make any progress without Davy Reardon say so because he's the one who's changing the discs almost on the games so you can't get to the next track until he loads it up effectively mm. and also there are certain points in the game especially towards the end as his state of mind becomes more frayed where you literally can't make progress without Davy Reardon actually modding the game for you so there's a, a bit where it's like oh there's a six digit code that you have to put in and it's completely random um, but after a few seconds he's like I've written the answer on the floor for you because it's obviously impossible otherwise um, and it's like you're completely beholden to uh, Davy Reardon as the designer to let you make progress through the game so it kind of like it's an interesting exploration of like how much control the designer of the game has over the player yeah um so so if and you know it, it deals with similar themes to Stanley Parable maybe from a different perspective yeah um, I think possibly if um the Stanley Parable uh, is about um pushing you know player freedom um, um, I mean, the Stanley Parable is is also, a, you know, is an interesting game for lots of reasons as well, because it's, uh, like you say, uh, uh, you know, challenging your thoughts on player freedom and actually how much that is curtailed and channeled by um, the, the the developer um, or the ma- the game maker. Um, I think maybe here there's um there's some stuff about him thinking about how much freedom a a, a game maker actually has um so if the stanley parables are possibly a bit about player freedom there's uh, possibly something here about um you know developer freedom um mm. i think i mean towards the end um like you you i think you said earlier um the the last game in in the collection um he uh read and says um uh um that uh it seems to despise the player um at some point and you wonder whether um well i was wondering at that point whether he was kind of you know trying to say that you know although coda is a kind of sympathetic figure in this if you it's not necessarily that his is the the correct way to approach things either because if you if you do that and you make games solely for for yourself whether that's a, a kind of destructive that can be a destructive path to go down as well whether mm. if you don't have any considerations apart from your yourself i mean uh reading's being you know seemingly being selfish by um you know showing these these games to people when coda doesn't want him to and um uh putting interpretations on them that coda doesn't want them to um, um uh you know manipulating them for his, for his own uh desires but in actual fact you know kind of coder isn't doing too too great himself Mm -hmm. um when he's actually just solely focused on what the games mean to to him so it's um it's possibly kind of the clash between two kind of destructive parts of his personality neither of which should be allowed to be uh, you know unfettered because that that's unhealthy but that mm. which kind of pull in in uh you know opposite directions and and create you know kind of problems for for him personally mm. one thing like one bit that i was really impressed by in the game is like there's a a moment where there's a, a game that he's created that the reading um notes is the only uh time um Coda seems to be at peace with himself and makes a kind of genuinely 
um in like pleasant experience where oh, okay. basically you're in this house and you, you you're just asked by this person to tidy up things whilst kind of having this conversation about you know maybe this is a way to kind of cleanse your soul it's almost like zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance <laughs> um where you're kind of just kind of like focusing on these little tasks and running around um and, and then it suddenly stops and um reading interprets that as a like oh but even here a good thing can't last forever and the music stops and the companion disappears and you have to finish the game you have to you have to go to the exit um but later on he reveals that he actually cut that game short mm. so where he'd interpreted that as like um coda's desire to curtail the player's experience coda's desire was actually for that game to end us endlessly loop forever um and it was it was reading himself who kind of like curtailed the experience um and and so his kind of modding the game and manipulating it and then kind of like you know uh kind of using that as a as a means to psychoanalyze coda almost um and and so he later on as well you find out that he's been adding these lamp posts to the game <laughs> which he then interprets as coda's desire to for the player to have some kind of a destination in the game but then later on coda is like why do you keep adding lamp posts to my game Can, can't you just leave them be <laughs> so, yeah which yeah. is a really interesting touch this idea that there has to be a destination that you're going towards he can't accept the fact that you know these games are just like little thought experiments really yeah i th yeah i th i think you know th that kind of um uh you know the 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 clash between kind of um unrestrained kind of creative um creativity for self and kind of just completely giving yourself over to try and um achieve uh you know n uh notoriety and acclaim um those two kind of uh polar opposites are both you know both but neither of them is is particularly healthy or conducive to making you know uh, a a great game and i think that neither coder or um or reading can come out of this um mm. you know uh as as kind of healthy characters at, at the end i am um, I think another one, another one that's well, one of the ones that stood out for me was I think it's possibly even the is it the first or the second game, and um, it's one where um, you can only walk backwards, you can mm. only move backwards, and um, when you start to move backwards around this kind of um, uh, it's not a very large environment, but you, you move backwards and suddenly um, uh, words start appearing on the 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 walls, and I think the kind of the the overall. Um, uh, I can't remember the exact wording, but it's given to you in bits and pieces. But it's it's basically something along the lines of um, how um, if if the past is always behind you, how can you ever confront it, or something like that. Yeah. And I think that possibly, you know, once again is kind of a a kind of autobiographical message. You know that he that's you know the way that he as a game developer or as a person more um mm. feels about you know his 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 path so far in in uh in game development you know that he's um you know he has these issues um uh, and that um this is kind of you know making this game possibly is a way like i said of kind of you know part self psychoanalysis part you know kind of therapy of um mm. you know dealing with um with the person he you know possibly has become that he possibly isn't a hundred percent overjoyed with um and i think it's really interesting that we've got to this point now as well where you know uh i guess the mediums come to maturity to the extent that you can have these very self-reflexive um uh kind of personal pieces like this um and playing it really reminded me of um the work of um an american animator called don hertzfeld I yeah don't know if you've yeah heard of yeah him. yeah in particular he did a animation called rejected which is very self-reflexive have mm, you seen that yeah one? yes so in rejected he um kind of chronicles his attempts to 
make cartoons for this kind of Canadian children's television station or something, but he makes them so disturbing that they're con- or surreal that they're constantly rejected. And eventually, as his kind of depression starts to kick in because he's being rejected all the time, the animations themselves start to break down. So yeah. they're kind of stickmen figures that he draw. Uh, typically draws and is famous for start going all kind of like juddery and holes start ripping in the fabric of the paper sucking all of like the characters in um, and it just gets really kind of like the, the actual medium of the film that he's making it on just starts to break down and that almost starts to happen in this game as as the, the games progress um, yeah, there's and a... you have this imagery of uh, prisons constantly yeah. as well bars dropping and like imprisoning the player imprisoning the designer um and i was just going to point out that you mentioned there were two themes earlier i think the third theme could be the idea of kind of prisons and kind of being trapped um which he explores quite a lot in this game yeah and i to that end as well the the kind of an offshoot of that but it's also prisons is a major part of the game and another major part of the game um is uh the idea of mazes as well um uh possibly um, mazes that um, uh, can't even be beaten um, yeah. uh, is, a, is a major and I th- I don't know I mean that's you know you can in- interpret that in lots of, of different ways but um, I think that um, uh, there's a, there's a you know a lot of ways you could you could read that whether it's talking about uh, mazes for the player but I think also as well mazes for the like you say same with prisons mazes for the mm. for the for the game uh, creator um, and you know mazes that you find yourself stuck in and that you can't then get out of like, we're making this sound we're making this sound like an incredibly depressing game and I guess on one level it kind of it's also really kind of like exciting isn't it because like yeah, it's, it's, it, it's it's one of those things where if you if you have if you come across something that is so playful and has so many ideas it's a real joy to experience it even if it is dealing with kind of slightly dark themes like it's it's i mean it's a really amazing experience um and like you know at the, at the end like the final shot is you ascending over this huge labyrinth that's sprawling out below you it's like you've kind of like there's this sense that you've kind of risen above it at the end or or reading's risen above it perhaps but at that point it's weird because like in the epilogue reading himself kind of abandons you he says he can't do it anymore and he goes silent and you're left to kind of like do the last little bit on your own and you end up finding this kind of beam which is a callback to earlier in the game where there's a kind of glitch that the beam's supposed to kill you, but instead it kind of like transports you up into the air above the level geometry, and you look down and just see this huge endless labyrinth sprawling out below you. Yeah, that's um, um it's an um, it's an amazing ending, absolutely yeah. amazing. And I think you know it's once again it's oh you could interpret it you know, uh, you know lots of of different ways, but uh, like you say, it's this kind of. <clears throat> it seems to be implying that you know that either he or you know anybody can have this kind of transcendent moment when um i mean the whole point of uh, it's a callback to a to an earlier game in the in the in the collection of games where um uh it's set on a is it set on a spaceship or a space station or something like that it's a science yeah. science fiction setting and there's this beam and the idea is um that um in the game itself was that you had to decide um uh that basically that that's a power beam and you um it needs to be shut off in this in this game that um coda created and that um it can be shut off by somebody stepping into it but that kills the person so it's the the it's your it's up to you it's the classic story of self-sacrifice that you get yeah yeah but instead because there's this bug it, it instead of killing you it raises you up through the the geometry of the of the game up into the kind of the the heavens um and it's used then again at the end of the game um in this really affecting ending where um you step it you know you step into the beam and it raises you up and all you see all around you is this massive uh on the on the ground below you massive labyrinth of a, of a maze that seems to stretch on infinitely um 
uh, and you know that kind of transcendent moment it, like you say it seems to be that there's a, a kind of an implication there that <clears throat> and i don't know whether it's um uh you know whether you read it back into that kind of uh, idea of self-sacrifice as well whether you you know you have to sacrifice some of yourself or all of yourself to be able to have that transcendent moment to be able to rise above the problems mm. um, that have been created all around you and in actual fact that i think possibly that you have created for yourself mm. um in order to be able to see the you know what you've done because the rest of the time you're in this prison you're in this maze um you're kind of stuck and you can't um you can't get the right perspective on it until you kind of are willing to to um kind of uh, finish with all of that and actually like in the game kind of you know step into the beam and actually you know sacrifice the person that you were or you've become um and um uh then and only then are you able to um to proceed and equally like as a player you have to kind of sacrifice some of your um own kind of um desires in order to kind of um get, go along with the the, the designers kind yeah, of that's, experience yeah, so, the game yeah it's well. a good point so, yeah um, yeah so so there's there's a kind of sacrifice on both yeah sides, you have to I give think. your you know your your freedom over because i mean yeah. i think it was you know it, it's worth saying that in the game if you you don't have a choice you know if you want to keep going you have to step into the beam on both occasions um mm. so yeah there's possibly d- very definitely that as well that you have to kind of give yourself over to this this fate if you want to to proceed you have to you know mm. give yourself over to you know you have to relinquish your freedom in order mm. to to move forward if you like but um i think i think games are always on some level about freedom um and and often like uh about freedom in in the extent that you have to give up some of that freedom in order to play and and that can be an interesting thing to think about in yeah. itself well and the the stanley parable was a, a lot a, a, about that a lot a lot about that yeah. wasn't it you know it was that you know how much freedom do you actually have um yeah. and um it was done in a very you know very clever very kind of cute and comical way but um you know as a player how much freedom do you do you have and um if you choose to exercise that freedom how much of it do you exercise and you know if you you know if you try to exercise too much of it it can end up being a bad thing for you rather than actually being a a good thing yep you know yep. so I think that's a, a good point to wrap up. Um, <laughs> this, it, talking about this it, is talk, like talking is like a, a, a you know a kind of verbal maze trying to work your way through this because um yeah it's um it, it yeah it's like a George Louis Borges novel. <laughs> I don't know if you've read any of his stuff. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I don't know. D- drop some obscure knowledge on you there. It's uh, his a kind of. Um, Has he done uh, any Peppa Pig stuff? I've been reading a lot no, of that. No, no, he's, he, he's <laughs> a kind of early science fiction writer, kind of Argentinian, I believe. Oh, really? Um, Are you reading uh, it in Argentinian? No, no. Oh, um, it's been translated. He's one, he's one of my favourite, actually. You I should expected more check of you. Him out. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I thought you were going to quote but, it to me in Argentinian then. No, no sorry, go no. On. He, he wrote um, a story called The Garden of Forking Paths, oh, which is yeah. kind of seen as a kind of precursor to hypertext fiction. No, which, I have read that, and actually. And kind of but like I, video game fiction. And I have he, read that, and I did yeah. not... I, I, his name totally escaped me. I, have, yeah. I, I, I don't, uh, he, I don't he think read, I've read any more a, of his work. But yeah, uh, he wrote a story called The Library of Babel as well, which I thought of in those final shots of the game, which is about an infinite library in space um, where every permutation of every book ever written exists in some form. Um, and uh, it, it's just nuts, really, <laughs> really nuts. But it's kind of viewed almost as a labyrinth he he writes about labyrinths a lot, a lot. <laughs> so i wouldn't be surprised if there was some reference to him here but obviously that's me uh in, enacting a, a, an act of interpretive violence on the game myself so <laughs> we'll we'll, no, we'll just stop talking about I, it. I, was, I was just gonna say i think it's i found it um uh f- funny that a game that is about um uh, a game designer um uh, basically ending up begging um somebody not to um 
you know interpret his games and uh, and discuss his games actually is contained within a game that is solely meant to be interpreted and discussed yeah and that you know is meant to you know is is meant to spark that kind of you know the it's meant it's a game about it's a game about um struggling to communicate that actually has encouraged people to communicate with one another and and discuss the the possible themes that it contains so i thought that was great just like we're communicating now yeah. so i guess like the game has has succeeded in that yeah regard. we've um, we've babbled on for yeah long enough i think on this but um, yeah yeah sure. yeah i'm I, well, I apologize if you're listening to this and you just have spent the last half an hour 40 minutes thinking what are they talking about um you it, it's not a long game it's not an expensive game um it, it's it's worth definitely worth checking out if you um yeah if you if you're you know um if you're curious if you're, yeah if you're curious about about things things like that um if, we, we didn't even get on to discussing whether it is uh, uh, whether you know ironically for something made up of games whether it actually is a game itself oh well, let's not get into that <laughs> discussion because we could be here all night um yeah yeah that that's that's obviously another thing that it kind of anticipates in some regard <laughs> but um yeah let's not talk no, about we'll that leave, we'll leave that we, I am. we've talked enough if you want to hear us babble on about something else next argentinian month, science fiction writers yeah we're going to be talking about uh what we're going to be talking about again um, I, <laughs> oh undertale, undertale. Yeah, undertale we're going to be talking about undertale next month yeah. so uh if if you haven't had enough meta self-reflexivity um then yeah there'll be plenty of that next month for that <laughs> so and and once again well it's a lot longer than the beginner's guide but undertale isn't a terribly long game so why not play along at home and you can be on the same page when we start talking about it next next month and not be completely confused like no doubt everyone was this time <laughs> i think we should i think we should maybe have a discussion about setting the bar a bit lower for these <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should just do Black Ops Three. Let's just do Pac Man. <laughs> no, let's, go, go, no, go back no. to Pong. <laughs> no, you can interpret far too much into that. <laughs> oh no, it's true. Yeah, it's all about capitalism. <laughs> um. Anyway, with that note, uh, let's say goodbye, James. Um, we'll we'll see you all next month. Yeah, or not see you, but talk at you next month yeah hope you enjoy the beginner's guide if you um choose to to pick it up and um yeah see you next month all right bye everyone bye bye